Howdy guys, I got this question, so we're just gonna go over this really quick, and that is how to test your intake air temperature sensor. Now, us 12 guys are fairly lucky. The temperature sensor is right here, easy to get at. So we can easily just uh, pull the plug and do some testing on them. Uh, 24 valves guys, don't exactly be that lucky. There is way back there, there's a, uh, behind the uh, lift hook back there. Uh, there is two sensors down there though. There's a uh, MAPS or uh, mass airflow or what do you call it? Uh, basically a boost pressure sensor. That's a three wire and then further back is the two wire intake temperature sensor. So make sure you got the right one if you're gonna be doing this testing. So this is the intake air temperature sensor. Now this is a thermistor, which basically means it is a ver resistor that varies its resistance based on temperature. So the PCM controller thing, majigger over there, uh, just that. Uh, checks the resistance and says, okay, it's approximately this temperature. Now, if this guy goes bad, it'll be throwing the wrong resistance. Now, uh, if you have a bad connection or whatnot, that could also give you problems, but for now, we're just gonna be testing the resistance. So, just disconnect that plug right there. You can see we got this, the two pin right there. So, and then we take your resistor checker, which is our multimeter. So, you wanna take this guy and you wanna put him on the ohms setting. Now, I don't know if you can see there or not, but the ohm setting is right there. It's the fancy uh, upside down you looking thing with the fancy tidbits. You can see we're on ohms there. Now this is zero L or it's actually OL, a zero or whatever. It's overload, it stands for overload. If we were to uh, just take these two pins and put them together, like I say, it's resistance. So there's no resistance, not a whole lot. So it's reading ah, there, basically nothing. We got basically one point one three ohms that is the resistance of this cable and then if we check the resistance of my thumb here you'll see that it goes up a bit so the higher the number the i can't decide what the resistance of my thumb is i guess whatever but the higher the number the uh the more resistance you can see we're talking about mega ohms so we got no regular just ohms there nothing there's nothing and then there's got kilo ohms and we got mega ohms so uh, that, make sure we're, this is a 10,000 uh, ohm thermistor, which means at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll be approximately 10,000 ohms. So make sure you're getting the correct uh, uh, range on your multimeter. So we're just going to poke the pokey bits at the other pokey bits and see if what kind of reading we get. We're going to try to get so you guys can see the uh, multimeter here. Uh, it's pretty chilly. It's actually only 40 degrees, but this will Whatever, I don't like the cold. Oh, see, it's not, it's, I'm not, I gotta poke around in there a little bit because I really can't see with all the stuff in there. Let's see if I can uh, do it any better with, okay. You guys can't really see. I just poke around in there until I get a solid reading. Optimally, you'd be able to see what you're doing. Oh my goodness, come on. I've been good to you. There we are, right there, solid reading. We're getting 29.37 kilo ohms. You can kind of see the K there. That is what we're looking for. So it's 29.37 kilo ohms. So we can just look at our chart and see what we're supposed to be. Now, uh, thermistors are a logarithmic scale, so it's not as super simple as it could be, but uh, just like I say, look at your chart and see what it is. We can see ours there is we're about on spec. Not perfect, but pretty close. That is uh, to be expected, but because thermistors are just generally not super accurate. They have a very wide tolerance for error. So uh, the factory service manuals will typically tell you that as long as it's within 10% of the uh, this prescribed value, uh, you can uh, call it serviceable and re don't have to replace it. Otherwise, you know, if it's out of 10%, then you might want to consider replacing it. Pretty simple stuff. So, uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's like uh, at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, it should be 10,000 ohms, but as long as it's within 10% uh, or like, you know, uh, 9,000 or 11,000 uh, ohms, you can call it serviceable. So, um, there's that just using the multimeter to test it. Now, obviously, just because you got the multimeter in there doesn't mean, and the sensor is good, doesn't mean your wiring is good. So, you can do is you can uh, check the wiring, just, you know, just basic stuff here. Just check for corrosion on the uh, plug there. Maybe lube it up with a little uh, di dielectric grease or whatnot. Hope, uh, and uh, electrical contact cleaner. But what you can also do is you can check, uh, use a live data, or 
First, you can check for codes. Uh, the computer will see something really weird. It'll say, hey, uh, you know, we got maybe shorted. We got an open, uh, a open uh, connection, whatnot. It's uh, shorted or what have you. And so it'll throw a code saying, hey, hey, let's tell the guy. Or sometimes if it's not sure, if maybe it thought, only sees uh, whatever under certain conditions, it'll say, okay, we're not sure if it's actually a problem or not, just a fluke here and there. So it may not actually throw a code. It'll throw a, like a pending code, which uh, means that it will not turn on the light or it's not really sure if it's, ac it's an actual problem or yet. So yet or not so uh, use a code reader and check the codes see if there's anything there to help you figure out your issue or another thing you can do is use a live data tool now if you don't have either the code reader or live data tool or whatnot uh, you can go to like to uh, I think AutoZone is generally pretty good about this you just uh, go in there and say hey I need your tool to be able to troubleshoot this problem so I can spend parts at your store on my truck they'll be happy to help you so um, you just plug in a little uh, tool there to the OBD OBD2 port in the truck and then you just uh, you just uh, turn on the truck or turn on the key anyway and you just set it to look at the uh, intake air temperature sensor the PCM will tell it what it's reading and so you can make sure that the temperature it's reading is a correct I mean like if it's uh, if, if it's zero degrees out cold engine it's telling you it's 200 degrees it's reading 200 degrees you know there's a problem now so what you can do there is you know make sure that the uh, temperature sensor is working with this uh, multimeter method or you can take a 10,000 ohm resistor or how, what have you any really any value resistor as long as it's approximately in that area but let's just say 10,000 ohm resistor you take the connector out and you take the resistor and just put it in the two sides. So you're basically uh, putting a resistor between those two pins. And that'll fake out uh, the, the computer. If it's a 10,000 ohm, it'll fake it out into thinking that's 77 degrees out. So you just go on your live data tool and make sure it's reading approximately 7, 7, 77 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That's uh, not only you just make sure that the sensor is correct. If it's not correct, you can just uh, like plug it in or whatever or leave the resistor in there and just start wobbling wiring all over the place and that will allow you to uh, start, you know, just wobble it around see what you have to do to start maybe changing the readings or actually get it to read correctly and, you know, you can try to pinpoint the area for the issue based on where you're wobbling the wiring, whether it's cut or shorted or what have you, bad connection. So uh, there you go. Hopefully that answers all your questions you will ever have and uh, yeah, take care. Uh, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. I typically do try to uh, get, the, get to those and reply as soon as I can. Uh, so yeah, take care and keep wrenching.